I'm going to race this 3D printer to see how many Sudoku puzzles it can solve in the time it takes me to solve one puzzle. In this video, I'm continuing to work on turning my 3D printer into a Sudoku solving robot. In the last video, I covered how I attached the pen to the 3D printer and then how I started to generate the G code to write the number five and how I struggled with that and how it was really hard. And there were a whole bunch of problems that I had to overcome, but I got it working and then I started working on the actual Sudoku solving algorithm part and I talked about my approach for that. So if you haven't watched that video, go back and watch that first. In this video, I'm tackling the last major problem of this project, which is to use a camera to take a picture of the unsolved Sudoku puzzle. Then I'm gonna be using computer vision to process that image and to extract the numbers off of that puzzle so that I can feed it into my Sudoku solving algorithm. Earlier you saw me with the webcam that I was gonna use for this project. I even 3D printed the mount and attached it to the 3D printer. But as I've hooked it up to the computer, I can see that this isn't gonna work. And the reason why is that it's such low resolution. It was like, a, I think it was less than $5 on eBay and I bought it like six or seven years ago. I don't know if you can see that here on the monitor, but I've got a little Python script running that shows the view of the camera and the resolution is so low that I have to move the X gantry up all the way to its maximum point and it's still not enough to fit the puzzle in its full field of view. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this old webcam off and I'm gonna toss it in the garbage because it's really kind of useless. And I'm gonna use this webcam, which is much higher resolution. I'll go ahead and hook it all up and run the same Python script and show the field of view just to make sure that the puzzle will fit in the field of view so that it can take a picture. I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect this camera and I'm gonna connect up the newer camera to see if the field of view is any better here. All right, so it's initializing that script. It takes a little bit to get the webcam feed up and going. I'm holding this new webcam much lower and you can see that the puzzle easily fits within this new field of view. Um, unfortunately, I'm gonna have to redesign that mount and 3D print a new one for this new webcam because they're not the same form factor, but uh, this is gonna work much better than that old one. Now that I've installed that 3D printed mount for the new camera, I've got to figure out the rough X, Y, and Z position that I need to move the 3D printer to in order to fit the puzzle within the frame of the camera. I've gone ahead and I've updated the Python script so that it sends the right G code commands to the 3D printer when it starts up so that it moves to the right position and takes a picture of the puzzle. So this is what that script looks like. It's gonna home the machine like it did before, but this time it's gonna move the camera into position so that it will take a picture of the puzzle. So there it goes, it's homing the machine and you'll notice that it will actually turn on the built-in LED to full brightness. It'll give it its own light source. So it turned on that LED and it's gonna move into position and then I actually have it stop and then I'm gonna actually press enter in order to take a picture just so that I have a little bit more control over that. But that's how that script works. It will take a picture of the Sudoku puzzle. One of the improvements that I've made here is that I've added this little 3D printed bracket that kind of slides onto the corner of my build plate and that just acts sort of as like a stop block or an indexing point so that when I go to process the image I want to make sure that all of the cropping happens in the exact same spots every time. So that's just added a little bit of extra repeatability here in this setup. So I've just told the Python script to take a picture of this puzzle. Let's jump on the computer and see what sort of processing we need to do to extract the numbers off of this puzzle. I'm going to be really honest with you. I don't know anything about computer vision. This is the first time I'm using this technology and it honestly kind of scares me a little bit. I'm not a great programmer. I don't know a whole lot about Linux. So just keep that in mind as I fumble through learning this new technology and work out some of the kinks. I'll be using something called OpenCV as the computer vision part of this project. In addition to that, I'm gonna need 
an optical character recognition tool. For that, I'll be using a package called Tesseract. Now on its own, Tesseract doesn't do a great job of taking any image and just pulling information off of it. You actually have to process the image and clean it up and remove all of the noise before Tesseract will give you a good result. As you see here in the background, I'm actually on the Raspberry Pi installing OpenCV and Tesseract. After about a day and a half of trying to install OpenCV and Tesseract on the Raspberry Pi, I finally got it to work. So we'll start with the image that I just took using the camera mounted to the 3D printer and we'll go ahead and feed that right into Tesseract. You'll see that it doesn't give us a great result because there's so much noise here, there's a lot of lines that it has no idea what to do with. So the next thing we need to do is help Tesseract by starting to eliminate some of the things that it doesn't need. The first thing we need to do is to convert this from kind of a noisy colored image into a clear black and white image. So we'll first convert it into a grayscale image and then use a threshold algorithm to convert it to black and white. And it should clean up the image quite a bit. This isn't gonna be good enough on its own. So the next thing I'm gonna do is to subdivide the image into a nine by nine grid so that I'm just left with an image of each cell of the puzzle. And then we'll ask Tesseract to do an optical character recognition on that single image. So that way it doesn't have to worry about all of the whole puzzle. It can just work on one image at a time. Even after subdividing that full image of the puzzle into a nine by nine grid, I'm still left with some of these images having little bounding boxes around them. So what I need to do is crop those images a little bit further so that I get rid of those bounding boxes. And then I can add some white space padding around those images to give the Tesseract tool a lot better chance of recognizing the characters. I also am gonna tell Tesseract a couple of additional pieces of information that will help it out significantly. I'm gonna tell it to only look for a single character in the image, so that way it's not looking for a word or a paragraph or multiple lines. And then I'm also going to give it a white list of characters of one through nine, so that it's not trying to return information about letters or symbols or punctuation or anything like that. It just knows to look through the numbers one through nine. With these changes, I'm seeing a major improvement in the results that Tesseract is Providing. One of the last little things that I've done to improve the results is to add this little extra light here and that just illuminates the puzzle so that when the camera takes a picture it has more light and it just helps it out. I've been tweaking the code for several days trying to improve recognition. I'm still missing one or two numbers on each puzzle. This is really frustrating because I'm so close. But without overhauling my approach entirely, I think this is the best I'm going to get. I can't have any errors when it comes to the starting state of the puzzle, so I've added the ability to edit the results of Tesseract. Like I said, Tesseract can identify most, if not all, of the characters of the puzzle, but I need to be able to edit those last one or two so that I ensure that I have a good starting state for the puzzle. With that said, it's time to run the full test. I'm going to race this 3D printer to see how many Sudoku puzzles it can solve in the time it takes me to solve one puzzle. If you'd like, you can put your guess down in the comments below. I want to know how many puzzles you think this thing will solve before I can even finish one. Okay, I'm going to load the first puzzle onto the printer and I'm going to hit start on the computer and then I will start my own puzzle. Okay, that's ready to go. I've got a little action camera set up so that I can get some good close-up shots of the puzzle. I've got my puzzle here, I've got a pencil, I've got some crackers, I really think this might make the difference. Okay, I'm gonna hit start on the Sudoku solver. It's opening the serial port, I better get started. Okay, so I'm looking at my puzzle here and I'm looking for naked singles. Oh, there it goes, great, I'm already falling behind here. I wanna look for rows, columns, or boxes that have um, most of the numbers in them to help me find some of these naked singles. So I'm looking here at this top, actually the bottom row looks really good. So I'm gonna start taking some notes here. So it's already <laughs> identified all of the puzzle in the first one. So I'm not off to a great start here. In this case, I didn't have to edit the results. It actually got it right the first time. So that's awesome. So I'm gonna hit start and let it do its thing. See, it's already solved it, crap. Okay, go ahead, start writing in the numbers. I haven't even written down one note yet. Okay, it's writing numbers back there and I am still just looking at this thing trying to get an idea of where to start. Gosh, okay, so that actually already finished the first puzzle, and I have only written in some of the candidates on the first row here, so I'm not doing too well. It's on to puzzle number two for the 3D printer. I'm still working on my puzzle, and I'm about one ninth done. So 
we'll see what happens. So I'm just checking the results here to make sure that puzzle two has the right starting state. And I'll go ahead and make any corrections that I need to. This did a really good job. Uh, puzzle number two, also no mistakes on the recognition. So that's really awesome. I was having all sorts of trouble leading up to this. So I was kind of worried, but the first two puzzles have had no mistakes in them. So that's great. And there it goes. It's going to start writing in the results and the solution for puzzle number two. I need to start hurrying up here. I'm falling way behind. Oh my gosh, that's going so fast. I'm still looking at this puzzle and kind of filling in the candidates and hopefully uh, identifying some of those naked and hidden singles. Gotcha. That's a number four. This one should also be pretty obvious here. This row I think is a, is a key here to solving this puzzle. It has very few candidates. There we go, I finished that row. It's important to remember uh, when you write in notes like this of the candidates that whenever you solve one of the cells, you need to go back and update your notes. Okay, time to load up puzzle number three here. So I'm gonna remove Puzzle two, did a good job. I mean, I'm assuming it did a good job. I programmed it to, to do the right thing. So assuming I know what I'm doing, it solved the puzzle correctly. So I'm gonna go ahead and load a puzzle number three in there. So like I said, I'm gonna be giving some of these solved puzzles away to the Patreon and YouTube members. So if you're not already signed up and supporting this channel in that way, this is a great time to do so because you're gonna get some cool part of this project. I'm gonna be sending out these solved puzzles uh, to the Patreon and YouTube members. Now I'm checking puzzle three for any errors. Yeah, puzzle three had a lot of errors. I'm not sure why, I don't think I have the alignment quite correct. So I actually kind of adjusted the puzzle on the print bed a little bit, and that gave me a lot better results. It actually had no errors the second time through, whereas the first time I had about eight or 10 errors. So alignment is actually really, really key here, and that's kind of the big downfall of the setup I have here, is the alignment has to be perfect every single time, otherwise it isn't gonna work. So in the future, if I was gonna improve this, I would probably go a whole different route where I would take a picture and use a lot more processing to get like the exact angle of the puzzle and adjust for all of the warping and stuff that the lens does. That's what's causing all these issues with some of the recognition. So without going further and, and completely changing uh, my approach here, this is really the best that I'm gonna get. But if I were to do this in the future, that's what I would have to do in order to solve some of these problems. I'm making some good progress here on my puzzle. I think I'm about two thirds of the way through. Meanwhile, the 3D printer is kicking my butt. I think it's done four puzzles at this point. The last few cells in my puzzle should go pretty quick here. I'm getting close. This one just finished another puzzle, so I gotta keep going. I'm getting really close to finishing this puzzle. I've only got a couple of cells left here. And there you've got it. I've now finished my puzzle.
The 3D printer is done doing its last puzzle and the results are in. This 3D printer kept cranking out these puzzles. I kept feeding it more and more and it kept just doing them. Are you ready to find out how many puzzles this 3D printer was able to solve in the time it took me to do one? Be sure to leave your guess below down in the comments before I give you the answer. So here's the puzzle that I did and it took me probably 15 or 20 minutes to do this. I'm not very good at these and I was also kind of babysitting the 3D printer and going back and forth. Normally I'd be able to do it a little bit faster than that, but that's pretty representative of the time it takes me to do a single Sudoku puzzle. It did one, two, three, four, five, six, seven Sudoku puzzles in the time that it took me to do one. I think that is a huge success. I had a ton of fun making this. It was so frustrating at times because I kept hitting my head against the wall and there was all of these programming problems that I'm not really good at. And so it was a very good learning experience for me to, to be able to solve some of these problems that I'm not used to solving. I'm, I'm much more confident in my electronic skills, but programming is something that I'm still learning and I'm still working on. So this was a really great project to kind of stretch my legs a little bit and to be exposed to some problems that I haven't really run into before. If this project inspired you to build something of your own, I'd love to hear about it down in the comments. If there's something that you would have done differently or have suggestions on how I could have done this better, be sure to leave those in the comments as well. If you enjoyed watching this video and you want to get one of these Sudoku puzzles, now is a great time to become a Bite Size supporting member through Patreon or through YouTube memberships. Becoming a Bite Size supporting member gets you access to a lot of cool things. There are several different tiers, so if you haven't gone and checked that out yet, be sure to do that. There's a link in the description where you can find out more information about becoming a Bite Size supporting member. I have plenty of other projects like this coming up, so if you're not subscribed to Bite Size, be sure to do that so you can keep up to date with what I'm working on. Before I go, let me tell you about the sponsor of today's video, and that's Altium. If you're working on projects that require electrical design, you're definitely gonna wanna check out Altium Designer. In my career as an electrical engineer, I've used a whole variety of different PCB design software, and I'm gonna be honest with you, I didn't like most of it. But that's not the case with Altium Designer. Designer. When you download the software and open it up, you'll see what I mean. It is beautifully designed and it is modern and they're continually updating it and giving it the latest features. What I like about Altium Designer is that it's an all-in-one platform. That means that you don't have to open up separate programs to do your schematic capture or your component selection or your board layout and your netlist generation. It's all in one platform. When you download that free trial of Altium, you're also going to discover one of the other features that I like and that's Altium 365. Altium 365 is a cloud cloud workspace that allows you to save your project files in the cloud. That means that you can collaborate with other people, you could work on various machines without losing your work. A whole team of engineers can be collaborating and reviewing the same project because it's cloud-based. If you want to get a better idea of what you can make with Altium Designer, go follow them on Instagram. You're going to find a whole bunch of different projects that people have made using Altium Designer. If you're ready to take your PCB design to the next level, go check out Altium Designer using the link in the description. When you purchase a license, you're going to get a 30% discount when you use that link in the description. Thank you Altium for sponsoring this video and thank you guys for supporting sponsors like Altium.